some sometimes you know people might actually even have problem with you because you smell like cigarettes right you're not smoking next to the person but you know you just smoke the cigarette you come back inside and yeah you smell it's a strong smell of, of cigarette and some people don't like that well should i you know start complaining that i'm being oppressed because i'm a smoker <laughs> it's within my power to stop smoking it's not easy <laughs> but it is within my power hello friends welcome back to the bench our patient today is actually let me refresh uh, 2009 subaru tribeca this is 3.6 liter engine h6 obviously and uh, which misfires on cylinders five and six it does not appear to be anything mechanical after extensive diagnostics so usually what do you do as far as the diagnostics you replace the injector replace the spark plug replace the a coil check the compression on the cylinders if you eliminated those and obviously you could uh, check the wiring and stuff um but if you eliminated those that's definitely an issue with an ecm now this one came for IC608 resoldering, something we do a lot. Uh, but the trick is that this one does not have IC608. This one has IC651, which is responsible for um, driving injectors. And the issue is not a missing signal, missing injection, injection signal, but intermittent intermittent misfires and that appears to be primarily when you uh, when the engine is at high rpm uh, which means we need to just replace the chip and and that's pretty much it but what's uh, interesting about this case is that in my listing for this particular repair is not yet live <laughs> it's not live yet it's not published i have the listing prepared pictures description all of that all i have to do is just click uh, publish on it uh, but the reason i haven't published it yet is because i'm waiting for the new chips replacement chips from china uh, i which i ordered um well, maybe a week ago something like that so it's going to be at least another week uh, maybe more before I actually get them. Uh, so we are going to perform a repair that I don't offer officially yet. <laughs> so that's what makes this case interesting. See, normally um, I rely on customers to just kind of, you know, open the ECM and check whether there's IC608 or IC651. In this case, I was I thought it would be an easy repair. Um, I see 608 repair, but it's going to be non easy repair. And now you will see why I charge a lot more for this repair as opposed to uh, I see 608. Uh, and uh, this is our replacement chip, the refurbished chip. I don't have new chip yet. Uh, which is working everything's fine with it so we'll see if that helps um, but the main reason is oh, come on. so this is IC608 this little guy it's an SC chip SC900 uh, 724 or 794 whatever uh, this one is SE 970 and as you can see there is a lot of pins <laughs> on this one so it is very time-consuming and some stuff can go wrong uh, meaning especially when you're doing resoldering if you bend any of these of these legs it's gonna be very difficult and more time consuming to put the chip back plus uh, there is a ground underneath right it's not only those pins 
because that would be easy. You just place the chip and you start soldering pins one by one. All right, that would be easy. But now what you have to do is put the solder on the chip, then solder the chip in place, aligning it perfectly, and then solder the, the legs. So it's, um, it's much more difficult process, much more time consuming process. And that's why I charge more, a lot more for this. But for this one, I actually gave the customer a pretty good price um, because it's the you know, repair that is not officially yet uh, published. Plus, you know, the, the ECM is already here. And you know, I hate to just you know cancel the order, charge a bench fee and send it back as it is. And you know, so I figured, OK, let's just let's just do a good discount. So let's do it. Uh, the only challenging part as always, the same with the throttle control chip, is that the cup is relatively close and we have a plastic relatively close. We don't want to melt anything and we don't want to explode the cup. So um, quick recap, uh, this is injection control, uh, the throttle control and the ignition control, right? I considered like whether the ignition control could be responsible for misfire, because unfortunately we don't know if it happens only at high RPM. It's not like you can connect the LED and, and watch for the blinking, because uh, you're, you're gonna, unless you use like high speed camera or something like that, maybe you could you could detect that there's one cycle missing on the on the injection, or the pulse is too short. Uh, the more reliable method would be to connect the oscilloscope with a lot of memory and just kind of, you know, detect, um, you know, review the, the reading, review the stored data and see if there is a pin missing. Um, even better way would be to just connect the microcontroller, like something simple, Arduino maybe. And, and just dump that data into to SD card uh, or some uh, EEPROM chip. And then, you know, have the chip just uh, register that uh, there was one signal missing and something like that. But it's very time consuming, obviously. It's, um, it's a lot of effort for a one-off thing, right? But that's how I would do it. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's replace it. And meanwhile, let's talk about some triggering stuff. How about that? <laughs> no, no, we're not going to get triggered. I mean, I hope you won't. <laughs> uh, because my subject today is weight loss. And the main reason my subject today is weight loss is um, actually a few reasons. Well, one, obviously, it's kind of a hot topic f from time to time. It just kind of comes and goes. And mainly it's because of, um, uh, let's call them activists, right? People with strong opinions and that hold them strongly. The trick in... Uh, in my profession, right, the software engineering profession, is to have strong opinions and hold them lightly. Um, and some people have strong opinions and feel very strongly about them. <laughs> All right, that's uh, that's a recipe for a conflict. Um, well, the other reason why this is the subject is because, um, well, I had to go through a weight loss journey. And actually, I, I kind of went for a like a sped up version. <laughs> it, it took me very little time to lose weight. Um, but that's not the method that I would recommend to anyone. Well, primarily because I'm not a dietitian. I'm not aware of, you know, the damage that it might cause. I'm not aware of the damage I cause to my body. Um, 
losing weight this quickly. But the story is actually pretty simple. Um, about um, five years ago, was it? Uh, time flies so quickly. Um, but roughly around five years ago, I immigrated to United States. And the process, especially back then, because now it's now it's different. And that was during um, that was right after. Well, actually, I was uh, when I was doing the paperwork and all that. It was the election year, uh, so you know uh, that was Clinton versus Trump, and Trump won that turn. Um, and um, and you know started changing a lot very quickly and, and it was a whole mess so that contributed to timing uh, but one of the procedures and uh, that you have to go through immigrating is um, the medical examination so you know you're checked for like um, diseases and um, you know, you gotta take an uh, x-ray of your lungs if you don't have, I don't remember what, TB? Or, yeah, I think it was for TB. Um, anyways, uh, the, you know, the, all your fluids test, blood test, all, all that stuff. Uh, there is an interview and, and a regular examination, right? And during that examination, the doctor informed me that if I gain uh, two more pounds, I'm officially obese. <laughs> that kind of, you know, that hit me hard. And that hit me hard mainly because all my life I was skinny until the age of uh, about around 30. And coincidentally, that's roughly where uh, when I got married. And it is common, um, uh, c uh, common opinion that, you know, if you get married, you, you gain weight, you stop shaving, you, you know, stop taking care of yourself. And, you know, maybe there was a little bit of that. Um, but I that was even way before I even uh, started working on the paperwork. paperwork. And first time I noticed that there's something different about my body uh, was when when I leaned up against the wall because um, you know I'm a smoker so and the, you, you don't smoke in the offices anymore and it hasn't been a thing for a few decades now so you have to go outside to have a smoke right so I was smoking and I leaned against the wall and I noticed that there is unusual padding on my back <laughs> you know all this fat over here and and I noticed that like hey that is different I, I don't remember ever having that because for about 30 years uh, I could eat anything I wanted in whatever quantities I wanted and never gained weight until about the age of 30 and my body started changing I guess and I started accumulating uh, weight right but since I was not in that mindset I, I never had any experience with weight loss or weight control or dieting or anything like that because I was always used to you know eating anything I wanted and never gaining weight and some people are like that for, for a long time, uh, for, you know, pretty much their entire life. They just never gain weight. Uh, but it's more common that at roughly at the age of 30, your body goes through some changes that now at your metabolism slows, I guess. I'm not sure how that works exactly. But it's pretty common that, you know, you have always been a skinny guy and now you gained weight. So let's blame it on marriage, <laughs> right? You got married, that's why you got fat. Um, anyways, that was the first time I, I noticed something was, was different. 
But I didn't pay too much attention to that. I, I definitely didn't do anything about it. And I should, have started, I should have started doing something about it back then. But I did nothing. Then I started moving a lot. Um, from, I moved from my hometown to the, uh, to the country's capital. Um, uh, then and before then, I was working in uh, another big city about thirty miles from my hometown. Um, which means I was eating a lot of uh, junk food, meaning fast food, mainly McDonald's. I I love uh, McDonald's in Poland. It's not like McDonald's in the United States. Uh, in Poland, it's it's the menu is a lot bigger there's a lot more options uh, the food in my opinion is tastier <laughs> uh, it's yeah no mcdonald's in poland is is a good restaurant <laughs> fast food restaurant but still it's 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 a it's good food and it's not cheap it's not cheap like in the united states because those prices uh, in uh, in Poland are pretty much the same as prices in the United States, but in Poland you make a lot less money. Uh, so e effectively, it's much more expensive. A concept lost on Tucker Carlson praising uh, Russian stores that paid hundred bucks for groceries, uh, not accounting for that. You know, five hundred bucks is usually what you make a month. So that grocery run, that's you know, five of these and or four and of these, and you're out of money. So, you know, and that's not counting rent and utilities and none of that. Anyways, I was eating a lot of McDonald's, uh, especially after we moved to Warsaw. Uh, the Uber Eats uh, was like really popular and it's really convenient <laughs> um, not to mention back then it was really really cheap right that was before they they bumped their prices uh, so that was in that period when they were trying to get, get uh, control of the market like uh, get people used to using the app and then jack the prices up typical strategy of the big corporations, right? Anyways, I was ordering a lot of McDonald's and I loved it. And I was drinking a lot of beer too, but you know, I still drink beer and you know, I keep my weight uh, at the level, right? So yeah, I drink a lot of beer, but I don't eat a lot or I don't overeat. And I, I usually don't eat fast food anymore. Uh, but that's mainly for the economical reasons. Uh, it's just too expensive. I prefer to. <laughs> I, I can cook my own junk food. <laughs> I don't need to order it. Um, plus, I had other concerns, actually. Anyways, uh, I am 5'6". So in this country, that's considered rather short. In Poland, it was considered average. And I bet in some other countries, it's considered uh, tall. <laughs> you know? But yeah, in the United States, a lot of people are really tall. So yeah, I'm considered short here, which I don't mind. I mean, you know, short people live longer. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one way to look at it. Uh, and being 5'6", I approached a weight of 180 pounds. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but I was really chubby. <laughs> it not, not so much on the face, but, you know, my belly was so big, I, I couldn't even, uh, you know, get comfortable at night. I could, uh, usually, I like to uh, sleep on my, on my stomach or I used to, <laughs> and that was no longer possible. Not to mention, I couldn't even see my own peepee -pee, um, because of my belly, you know? So that was kind of concerning, 
right? And as soon as the doctor said that, you know, yeah, you, you are overweight, but two more pounds and you're officially obese. And why is that bad? Well, then if you're officially obese, where I come from, then you join the, the, the other group of people that are obese. So anything wrong with you, high blood pressure, um, you know, asthma, uh, joint uh, problems, uh, you know, anything like that will be attributed to, to your weight, uh, at least uh, partially. Uh, so you're gonna, you know, be a statistic of a uh, uh, of obese uh, person. Is the, for the same reason when you go to the doctor, you go to the hospital, you go uh, anywhere for any medical attention, you you are within the group of obese people, so they have to run like some tests, uh, you know that they run for obese people uh, so I, I don't know what those are but basically you're treated differently as an obese person because obviously that's a concern right not to mention that uh, I actually learned that recently the primary reason uh, nurses are injured on the job is for uh, is basically handling obese people you know so that kind of didn't feel right that didn't sit right with me that you know now my decisions my choices my dietary choices now cause other people uh, harm right it's it's not a good it's not a good thing to to think about that night you know so that hit me even harder but it was mainly you know there's a, a some older doctor told me one time uh, about how men versus women uh, react to those news like if you tell the man uh, that you need to quit smoking or you're gonna be dead next year uh, the man is more more likely to get scared and stop smoking than a woman woman is less likely to stop smoking after receiving that uh, in you know receiving that news and I suspect that also works for um, obesity right the diet you know if the doctor tells a man you can, you, you're gonna be gone next year if you don't change your diet they're more likely to change their diet obviously I'm saying more likely that's that's not a rule that's just the meaningless statistic. Anyways, how did I lose my weight? Well, I ate McDonald's. Um, sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? Well, wait for it. Um, I'm a simple man, right? I'm, I, I think simply and I keep stuff simple because I'm not smart enough to to you know process complex things so I always uh, simplify everything and I break all the complex problems into small simple chunks and I solve those simple chunks and eventually every, all the pieces fall together uh, fall in place or at least usually that's what happens oh it's gonna rain um, so I approached it in uh, the simplest way possible, meaning, actually I can even give you an advice, uh, something that no one else will, will give you. I'm going to give you a financial advice and a medical, medical advice. Aye. Aye. As soon as I get this chip off, without ripping any pods. Mm. 
Okay, all the cups are in place. All the components are in place. Okay. My cup didn't explode. <laughs> so we're good. So, uh, my financial advice for you is if you want to save money, you have to spend less money than you make. Okay? That way your balance is positive and you accumulate money. If, on the other hand, you spend more than you make, you lose money because your balance is negative. All right? That doesn't sound like an advice because you already knew that. That's why I can say it's a financial advice because <laughs> there is no way to go wrong with that. It's just simple math right so it is simple but it is not easy simple and easy are not synonyms right and with weight loss that's medical advice I can give you if you want to lose weight you have to consume less calories than you expand that way you lose weight if you consume more calories than you expand you gain weight. Simple as that. And if you eat just enough, you you keep your weight at a certain level. And that's that's what I do. Right? So with that in mind, I decided that I will just follow this simple rule. Call it a thermodynamics. <laughs> I will follow the simple rule and I'll just eat less than I expand. So yes, I ate McDonald's. I ate McDonald's for breakfast every other day. Meaning I would eat I would eat every other day and only one meal which was breakfast. On top of that obviously I you know consumed or drank a lot of water, like some juices and stuff. Um, I didn't drink soda, but yeah, they say it's um, the, the, hard, uh, the, the food that gives you the most calories is uh, in liquid form. And in liquid form, you, you consume the most calories. So all those sodas and uh, coffees and uh, all that stuff, right? Shakes, maybe, I'm not sure. But yeah, I, um, that's what the dietitians tell me that, uh, you know, just avoid the calories in liquid form. Um, so I was pretty much kind of starving myself, but not really. It, it takes, I know we figuratively say a lot, uh, like I'm starving. I'm literally starving, right? Mm figuratively if anything but that's not starvation yet yeah, you're you're not even hungry yet your stomach is empty maybe but you're not starving yet starvation starts when uh, your body starts cannibalizing itself so first we burn uh, sugar and I don't know glucose something that is high energy that can be converted into energy quickly then the body uh, digs into the fat, which is slower energy. I mean, the, the, the process of converting that uh, fat into energy is slower. And, and if the body runs out of that, then it starts cannibalizing even the muscles. So you actually start losing uh, muscle uh, tissue. Uh, that's starvation, right? I never went that far. I never actually starved myself. But I definitely uh, didn't eat enough. But that's what's got to happen, right? You want to lose the, the fat? Well, your body needs to <laughs> convert that fat into, into energy. 
right? That means your, your body needs to be pretty hungry to start doing that. Because otherwise, if you say you, um, you're on a diet, uh, so you only eat enough to, to sustain yourself, you don't overeat and stuff, well, but then you stay at the weight you have. You, you don't gain weight, but you, you don't lose weight either. Uh, and that's not what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to lose weight. So naturally, I had to force my body into, into somewhat uh, starvation mode. So it's f to force my body into consuming all that fat. I didn't really exercise or, or stuff because I have, you know, I have a, a sitting job, right? So I had one uh, back then. Now the uh, oh, one thing that I didn't tell you and. You know, this is rather personal, maybe, but um, I've also been diagnosed with a um, autoimmune autoimmune disease, uh, which could have been a result of of poor diet and you know me being almost obese, right? It it could be. I d I don't know. I'm not a doctor, and they they wanted to send me to the hospital. I got the ticket to the hospital. Uh, but I never took it. I never went uh, to the hospital. So, uh, uh, but I was completely asymptomatic. It's only because I went through all those, uh, all that, you know, uh, examination for my visa. Um, actually, not not a visa, a green card. Um, only because of that, I. I was diagnosed with with all that right so it's not like i had any symptoms and you know so that was kind of curious case so maybe maybe i was misdiagnosed or maybe that was a result of of my poor choices when it comes to diet my poor dietary choices um anyways um how long did it take me to drop all the weight it um it started really well because initially I started dropping it, it the, you know, as soon as I underwent that, that McDonald's diet. Um, and oh, what did I eat? Um, the hash brown and some sandwich. I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, the menu in Poland is, is different than this. Okay, no. So, um, but it was kind of like uh, like light breakfast, but pretty greasy, <laughs> right? Hash browns are, you know, are really greasy. Um, and they probably put sh crap ton of sugar in all that food to make it taste uh, great. Like McGriddles, oh my god, I love McGriddles. <laughs> it's probably because that combination of the savory patty and, and that sweet... Um, what is it? Uh, like a waffle? No, no, that's not a waffle. The, it's basically like a sweet bun, and inside you get uh, salty, salty meat. Oh, I love this. <laughs> it it gets addictive, and uh, yeah, we'll get to that. But uh, once I started doing that the the weight just started melting off of me uh, to the point where after a few weeks literally a few weeks and um, the ladies in the office uh, started asking me about that because you know one one of them uh, was also kind of struggling with weight um so they immediately noticed that uh and and wanted to know how how did i do it <laughs> very simple just stop eating i stopped eating and the weight started melting off of me but that was only for a little for a little while when i so i dropped from like 180 to 160 to 160 very quickly but then to go to 
130 that I am right now, 133, and I just seem to keep that weight, even though I tried to put on some weight, because 30, uh, 133 is a little bit low for me. Uh, according to the dietitian, um, it's I should be at the weight of uh, around 150, 155, something like that. But I think that's like the, the the at the most what I should weight. But I'm thinking 145. That should be my that should be my perfect weight. Um, so I'm still right now. I should be gaining weight. Um, but to 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 drop from 160 to uh, 150 took me a lot longer than drop from 180 to 160 a lot longer so that initial phase is a lot easier because you have I know you probably have like a lot of um, I don't know how that works exactly, but yeah, that initial, uh, when you just start dieting, you see the results immediately. So that boosts your confidence, gives you the results. Um, it's uplifting. If on the other hand, your experience is that you're dieting, you're almost hungry, you're always cranky because you're hungry uh, and, and you can't seem to lose weight. Yeah, that's, that's very demotivating. I understand how frustrating that can be. And I absolutely feel for you if if you're going through that. Um, but sometimes that's how it's got to be. Um, so it was what was it? A few yeah, a few months to drop to more comfortable weight, and then I think a year. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because, uh, you know, now I, I weigh myself, like, pretty much every day, right? Because I have a scale. <laughs> I didn't have a scale back then, so I didn't monitor, like, exactly, scientifically, and I didn't keep the journal to just kind of see that, uh, that curve, that velocity of losing weight. Um... So I can't really give you the exact numbers, but I don't know if you hear my, my tummy rumbling because I didn't eat anything yet. And that's, that's how I keep my weight down. I don't, I don't eat at night, I don't eat suppers, and I eat late breakfast, so I just kind of combine uh, breakfast and lunch into one meal. Um, and usually just eat something in the afternoon, and sometimes no. Sometimes I just snack like, and it all depends because I'm um, like uh, a few days ago was it I made uh, ribs, awesome ribs. I love ribs, and what did I eat them with? Mashed potatoes because I love mashed potatoes. You know I'm Polish. I like <laughs> meat and potatoes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> shouldn't come as a surprise. Um. And since neither my wife or my son wanted to, to eat that, I mean, next day they did. But that day nobody wanted to eat, so I just kept eating and eating because <laughs> it was so good, I just couldn't stop eating. And I stopped myself to the point where, oh, I just felt like, oh my God, I ate way too much, way too much. It's not gonna feel good. Actually, it not only felt good, but uh, the next day I felt pretty good too. But the next day i didn't eat i didn't eat a meal uh, all day right i just skipped on on meal all day and throughout all day i had a one slice of pepper jack cheese and that was it as far as food goes right so it just kind of like my body self regulated i just kicked my body uh, you know, pushed my body into, you know, like, get a grip, <laughs> something like that, and and now my body is just like kind of self-regulating. If I ate a lot uh, the day before, the next day I'm 
I'm not hungry and I don't eat much. But also consider, because I'm not giving you um, a recipe how to lose weight, because I don't, I don't have one, uh, consider that I have a sitting job, right? I spend the majority of my day sitting. So it's different for me. I can actually eat a um, you know slice of cheese throughout the entire day and, and be fine. But if I had to do walking and or running or some physical labor um, or working in the heat or basically expending a lot of energy, well, that wouldn't fly. I wouldn't fly, it would not be healthy for me. And actually, don't get me wrong, it's not healthy to, to starve yourself. Uh, it's not healthy w what I do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it is. Uh, I didn't consult with a physician on that. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it is healthy. Uh, let's just quickly look at this chip over here. Okay, maybe this could be an issue of the solder. See how ugly this solder is? It looks like on the IC608. So perhaps this chip is okay and it's just soldering issue. But we're going to replace the chip anyways. Which way does it go? This way. Okay. So, having all that in mind, oh my god, this is gonna be so much work to align this chip <laughs> and solder it on. So, if it wasn't for the ground pads, this would have been easy. I would just do this and just start going pin by pin to to solder it on but we can't do that no sir we have to do it well yeah. alrighty well no way around it we just have to get it done so with all that knowledge uh, of how I lost weight, let's talk about the problems of losing weight. A little more triggering subject, I guess. And a horrible thing that sometimes happens, which is, uh, I'll call it acceptance. You know, when you just, when the losing weight is so hard, you just kind of accept that, well, I'm fat. What are you going to do? Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately, there are also people that kind of want to practice a crab in a bucket mentality approach. And convince everybody that you know, shouldn't be losing weight. Uh, no, being, being fat is good for you. It's, if someone's giving you crap because you're fat, it's, it's on them, it's their fault. And, you know, there is something to it because, you know, don't just criticize people because they're fat don't immediately ju jump into conclusions that well there must be there must be lazy because that's that's not f uh, that's not always fair that's not the lazy problem that's a discipline problem just like in uh, financial world uh, when you want to save money you need to just spend less than you make right very simple but is it easy no it's not easy because it takes discipline don't spend on stuff you don't need uh, don't spend money you don't have don't go into debt uh, don't buy this don't buy that you know don't splurge you know you gotta have some and sometimes a lot of discipline 
to just kind of, you know, not do it. <laughs> That's why it's not easy. It is simple, but it is not easy. Some people just can seem to uh, have the skills or discipline to, to follow through. They want to save money, but they just kind of can't seem to stop spending on, on stuff they don't need to. Like, you know, pack your lunch instead of getting a McDonald's or something, right? Um, I don't know, take a bike instead of taking an Uber. Um, or, you know, take a bus instead of driving. It's, you know, maybe you don't, maybe you have great communication, the, the availability of buses where you live, uh, but you still drive your car to work, you know, even though you could save more money on uh, driving, uh, riding the bus. Well, discipline, nothing more than a discipline. And it's not, it's not easy. And the same way with weight loss. It requires a lot of discipline. A lot. Discipline or, I don't know, maybe some kind of system. I remember that, you know, there, there are only two things that I went through life uh, that were, that I consider extremely difficult. Uh, one of them is weight loss. It took a lot out of me. You know, being hungry all day and then going to bed hungry and waking up hungry. And, you know, luckily I'm a smoker and um, so that helped a lot because, um, you know, cigarettes are working kind of like uh, appetite suppressant. Right, so that allowed me uh, that made it a little easier for me. If you're not a smoker, then that's going to be harder for you, right? Um, but it, it's a horrible, horrible feeling. There are smarter ways of doing that, like, um, well, my wife could, could tell you more about that because she is a dietitian. Uh, and she also uh, had to go through weight loss journey, but she did it smart because she's a dietitian. So she just eliminated certain foods from her diet, like I don't remember, like uh, white rice, white flour, like basically carbs. And uh, and she did an awesome job on oh, losing weight. But that was uh, that was smart. My method was very dumb but it worked nevertheless and now I have now I struggle with gaining weight now I, I want to gain a little bit of weight but I can't seem to hold on to it I went up to uh, 140 I think 141 or something like that so it did work for a while but now I'm again at 133 and I can't seem to go above that <laughs> not that I'm trying too hard you know I, I also do you know a lot of um, maybe not a lot but I do a fair amount of exercise because my eight-year-old keeps me keeps me in shape Um, so I should account for that and eat a little more and maybe more uh, calories, consume a bit more calories. Uh, but I, you know, it's not like I set it as a, as a goal that I want to achieve. I mean, if I gain a little weight, that's good. But if I can't, that's fine too. Okay, this chip is uh, pretty heavy, so we'll see if it'll stay in the position that I want it to stay in. We could have a little bit of misalignment, that is fine. 
as long as we are not more than a quarter of pod misaligned. Uh, and let's see, is that it? Okay, that's that sounds that seems good enough. Okay, pin number one here, pin number one here, good. All right, well, let's blow on it. See what it does. The flux is going to start oozing from underneath. All right. Mm. Once it cools down, we'll check if it's if it's holding. If it's holding, we're good, and we just need to do the the pins. But we'll see in a second. For that, we need a different tip, and I keep forgetting to order tips because I have knife tips, a lot of them but I only have one of these and this one is, this one should be replaced. Okay. Okay, my uh, fume extractor stopped working for a second. Um, sounds like the either the fan is the the bearing on the fan is uh, wearing out, wearing off, or something wrong with the controller. But since it's working now, it's probably not the controller. It's probably the um, okay, still very hot. I want it to cool down naturally. I'm not blowing on it or anything. And if it's holding, then we just do the pins. Anyways, having all that, let's talk about what sometimes happens when you're unable unable to to lose weight. You go into uh, just as the doctor told me that I was, um, you know, almost obese and definitely overweight, uh, my first reaction was kind of like denial. And then um, after a while, uh, kind of acceptance, right? A little depression, that kind of stuff. And then I decided to do something about it. All right. But uh, I see more and more people that are very vocal about how they are treated as, um, well, as obese people, right? It actually started a few years ago. Um, but now there's actually some consequences. 
by consequences, I mean, you know, I heard about this, um, it was in the news, was it? Um, some lady traveling with her kids uh, was denied a seat on the plane uh, because that extra seat was given to the obese person. Um, so these are the real consequences. I'm not judging whether they should get a free seat or not. Uh, you know, if they can't fit in one seat, then yeah, give them an extra seat. I don't, I don't care, <laughs> right? I mean, if if you don't, that's even worse. You know, have you ever sat on the plane next to someone who's just kind of spilling into your side? Um, that's not comfortable for anyone. Not not for a person that is being, you know, kind of crowded by a f obese person, and not for the obese person either. I don't think that feels comfortable being that. I honestly, I think I just wouldn't fly if I were in that position. You know, I know it's fine. You accept that you're obese. Well, then do what do what obese people do. Just <laughs> stay at the house. <laughs> Um, if you want to fly, on the other hand, well, at, at, at some point, you kind of have to take accountability, because it's not, it's not like it's a, well, it is a disease, okay, it's, it's not, it's kind of like with um, any substance abuse, we can't put 100% of blame on the person doing the substance be it the you know alcohol or food that's the same addiction right you just you know it's not good for you but you just can't seem to stop right and maybe you try maybe oh there was um actually i've seen it a few days ago uh the documentary uh about a a obese uh lady uh, that decided to lose weight and document all that on youtube so she started a youtube channel dedicated to her weight loss journey and uh, what happened is that she actually gained weight uh, throughout that uh, journey and i've seen some clips here and there uh, um, and one that resonated with me is is that uh, she she had this big list of of periods uh, periods within the year that she will not be dieting right like uh, thanksgiving christmas that kind of stuff right like no i'm not going to be counting my calories on thanksgiving All right but with that approach you know yeah you're, you're not going to lose weight again this takes a lot of discipline and you can't just say well today i'm not dieting i'll diet tomorrow well either diet or don't right and it's not going to be easy, losing weight, oh my god. As I said, one of the hardest things I had to do in life is lose weight. Doesn't sound like much, but it was a lot to me. Uh, it was hard. I do not, uh, that's why I, you know, I can absolutely relate to the people trying to lose weight and failing. Because, damn, this is hard. This is not a walk in the park. And let's face it, if you're if you're obese, you already have a some issues with self-control and discipline. So it's not going to be easy to to lose weight. And you know, it's not even like the uh, the gastric bypass can can just solve the solve the the problem like you know you can press the magic easy button and just lose weight and uh, first of all you need to qualify for the surgery which is a challenge itself because you do need to lose some weight yourself uh, you don't need to kind of prove yourself that you know this is not going to be a failure because it's the because surgery it, every surgery carries risks uh, so you know the doctor is not gonna just blindly say okay you want to lose weight here's your surgery nah, it doesn't work that way so 
once you qualify for the surgery, then undergo surgery, then you have like dietary restrictions, like you can't drink soda, you can't, I don't know, smoke, I don't know. There's like a lot of restrictions, so, you know, that post-surgery stuff. Then, you know, you have to just maintain your maintain your weight, right? Because just because the you have the uh, stomach reduction or whatever that is called, once you um, once you under undergone the surgery, it's not like you can never gain weight. You can you can still gain weight after the surgery, and that is where a lot of people kind of fail, right? So they they did uh, all that prep. They qualified for the surgery. Uh, they lost whatever weight they needed to lose, and then it just kind of comes back. You know, that's what they, they tell addicts that you know avoid avoid the places and friends that you used to abuse stuff um, with, right? Stay away from those old friends and those old na na neighborhoods uh, where all that happened. Because uh, if you if you do or if you don't avoid <laughs> if you just you know start hanging out with your old friends and uh in all those places it, the, the chance is that uh, you're gonna fall off the wagon right so that's mainly that's mainly the reason uh so the same thing with after you lost um lost weight you know just don't go near mcdonald's right uh, maybe don't hang out with your uh, fat friends maybe find new friends because uh, you know they're gonna be you know eating some good stuff that you used to eat and love and you know that's gonna give you an appetite so you know it does your journey doesn't end with just losing weight uh, that discipline needs to stay within you. Otherwise, you just go back to your old ways. So that's really tough. That is really tough, and I have nothing but respect for people who lost weight. On the other hand, I have not a shred of respect for people who not only didn't lose weight, but don't even try anymore and they demand special treatment because well we're plus size it's not our fault as i said we can't put 100 percent of blame on the person because it's kind of a disease right they need help they don't need to be you know uh, attacked for their weight uh, they just need help because it's not easy. Uh, but if you change that whole discussion into, you know, you're being oppressed because you're uh, you're overweight, or you're being oppressed because you're obese, well, you can change that. It's within your power. It's not going to be easy, and you know, but it is within your power. You know. I'm a smoker, and uh, if, you know, nowadays you can't really smoke anywhere anymore. When I, why am I a smoker? Because I grew up in the, you know, post-Soviet Union Poland. You know, we smoked everywhere. It's the, my mom smoked, my dad smoked, my uncle smoked, my uh, grandmas uh, smoked, my grandpa smoked. Um, you know, everybody I knew smoked, and they were smoking, the smoking was allowed everywhere, cigarettes were everywhere, they were cheap, very cheap, uh, extremely cheap compared to prices nowadays, like literally really cheap, like say 20 cents a pack, and now you gotta pay 10 bucks. Um, so everywhere were smoking areas, um, it was just a like cultural thing, right? Now it's different. 
right? And you know, some sometimes you know people might actually even have problem with you because you smell like cigarettes, right? You're not smoking next to the person, but you know, you just smoke the cigarette. You come back inside, and yeah, you smell. It's a strong smell of of cigarette, and some people don't like that. Well, should I? You know, start complaining that I'm being oppressed because I'm a smoker. <laughs> it's within my power to stop smoking. It's not easy, <laughs> but it is within my power. I'm causing the situation. I'm doing this to myself. And I should take accountability. And if I don't like that, I should just stop smoking instead of complaining. Right, so that's my simple view on it. So I no, I do not appreciate uh, this whole, you know, this whole idea of just kind of um, presenting yourself as an as a victim, because you yeah you are a victim, but unfortunately you are a victim of your own uh, choices, partially, again. I'm not putting 100% of blame on obese people. I put a little bit of blame on, um, you know, fast food restaurants and uh, like kind of pushing and tricking you and, uh, you know, just kind of making sure that you, you know, that you're going to eat next time. So, you know, seasoning, over seasoning, under seasoning, like adding sugar, all that stuff that makes you want to eat more it's it's almost addictive you know if if they were um if they were uh, selling a uh, heroin right you wouldn't put 100 percent blame on people who got addicted and that was literally the case with oxycodone right the doctors started pushing that on uh, patients that didn't really need it and they got hooked right are we going to blame the doctors or are we going to blame the victims, pretty much? Right? So, in this case, you know, I put a little bit of blame on the, on the corporate America that made uh, the consumption a, their core business. consumption of food not to say that I'm removing all the blame from the victims of obesity because at the end of the day yes only you have the power to do something about it and you just kind of put yourself in that position. Yeah, the companies made it easier for you. Maybe the companies uh, contributed. If it wasn't for fast food, you wouldn't be fat. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not saying it, it wouldn't be. Uh, but on the other hand, maybe, you know, without fast food, you would be just, you know, fat because you, you cook uh, the, uh, the food that makes you fat, right? You know, Polish uh, Polish cuisine is like really heavy. Really, it yeah, it does make you. It it's not a diet food by no means. But until I came to United States, I have never seen people this obese. It was a shock to me. Like I've literally never seen this much flesh attached to the skeleton. I didn't even think that was possible. Nowadays, yeah, we're catching up as a country. Poland is catching up. Now we have uh, our first share of obese uh, people because now we have adults that grew up in the time where, you know, we got Americanized, where fast food came uh, to us. The, the cheap food, meaning, uh, you know, the good food, right, the tasty food. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, we had milk and uh, and a milk bun for breakfast. That's it. 
or for lunch at school. Right. So they would, uh, I don't know, the lady, because you would eat in the in the class. Uh, so there was no dedicated, well, at least not for us. Um, uh, but they would they would just kind of wheel in the big uh, barrel of milk with uh, with a big ladle. Uh, we had our own cups, and everybody got uh, uh, the big ladle of milk and and a little bread. Right? That was it. No butter, no cheese, <laughs> no nothing. Just dry bread. I mean, fresh, freshly baked. You know, great thing that's that's one thing that i that i really miss in this country is the is the bakeries the fresh bread from bakeries uh, that's why i had to learn how to bake my own bread because i couldn't get it over here and over the past couple of years i perfected the, the process and yeah now I eat my own bread that I baked myself. I season it the way I like it, and then uh, I make it the, the texture that I like it, and so on. But anyways, my point is that now we caught up. Now Poland and, and other countries that didn't have obesity problem now does. But it's worse in Poland because uh, we have socialized, um, ed uh, you know, healthcare. Uh, so, you know, all these obese people go to the doctors for their various problems, health problems, and that many result from directly from their weight, and and they spend your money. The doctor charges for that, and that is the taxpayer's money. So it's kind of not fair, right? It's kind of a waste. I mean, not the, the taking care of this sick person, that's not a waste, but it's the waste to, you know, put yourself in that position and then having, you know, the taxpayer paying for the consequences of your decisions, right? Accountability. That's, that's it. You have to, at some point, you have to take accountability and just say yeah I put myself in that position now what can I do to climb out of the hole that I dug for myself and if your decision is to just go on TikTok and and complain that you're being oppressed because you're overweight uh, <laughs> same way the people who can find a job just go on TikTok and uh, just kind of present unhinged uh, or record unhinged videos um, you know that's not gonna get you anywhere that's not gonna help you Okay, now let's do first inspection. This is not done yet, but let's do inspection number one to see where we at. We're nowhere close to being done, but now I have to use the optics. So let's switch to optics is it gonna work yeah it works okay so we have bridging and we have whole bunch of pins on solder the alignment is good it's not perfect but it's good we're good okay so let's start uh, there you go Let's start reworking this, but I think we're gonna use King Bow here. 
uh, I used NC flux um, on the ground pad uh, because it's gonna be tough to clean it from underneath the chip <laughs> and um, NC flux is easier to cl clean and even if you leave a little bit of it it's fine uh, but the RMA King Bow RMA you shouldn't leave on the board This tip is done. Oh, and there's a bridge. And there's a bridge. All right, so uh, let me let me grab some more water. Um,
<clears throat> um. Okay, fat activists. <laughs> Is that what they call them? I don't think it's that popular anymore because a lot of them died. Um, so maybe it's actually not the phrase "health at every size." Maybe is actually not as accurate as it was presented to be. That is kind of what I was talking about: the crab in the bucket mentality. Um, And, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, I'm not criticizing anybody for uh, crab in a bucket mentality, because it's normal, right? Like, uh, imagine you and five of your friends apply for a job, right? And these are your good childhood friends, and you want to you wanna work with them, right? In the same workplace right because it's gonna be fun it's gonna be awesome but you get the rejection from from work right you get the re rejection letter as a first one no one else received anything so at that point it's absolutely natural that you feel like you're kind of hoping that the others won't get the job uh, because that way Maybe we can find another job, all five of us, right? So it's not like you don't want them to find a job, right? It's not like you, you don't wish them well, right? You're just kind of secretly hoping that, well, you don't want to be left um, left behind when, you know, all of them get, get a job and go to work every day together carpool and all that and you just stuck looking for a job yourself all right so yeah you wish them well you you want what you want is for everybody to get, get a job right but in, in this case it's just final you know saving grace is that nobody gets a job and then we're all on the same boat right and the same with weight loss all right you're gonna be left behind if you know you have five other fat friends and all six of us uh, try losing weight and five of them managed to lose the weight and I couldn't right well then I'm left behind I'm kind of left alone with that problem I no longer have my support group so subconsciously I hope that they also fail right so I'm not alone in this it's kind of sad but it is a reality unfortunately <clears throat> that is completely normal psychological behavior or psych psychological phenomena um, so I'm thinking many of of these fund activists are like those those people just kind of left behind they they wanted to lose weight they tried to lose weight they couldn't so now they just kind of try to work with it where i personally draw a line is when you start demanding stuff and start you know presenting your, yourself as a victim and demanding to be treated like a victim and that's where I draw a line because it's just not fair, right? I understand how hard it is. I un under understand um, how it works, and yeah, and I feel for you definitely. But you know, the this is just not not fair, and you know, even ignoring the fact that. If I have a uh, luggage, uh, either carry on or you know, or otherwise, uh, if it weighs more than the allowed limit, I have to pay extra. 
that's fair because I'm not sure if you if you're aware but based on the mass of the plane you have to rather accurately um, calculate how much fuel you need and the reason for that is that the plane cannot land when the tanks are full so in case when um, the plane takes off and there's a problem they have to land immediately they first need to drop the fuel right then they can land because it's not safe the plane is too heavy and full of kerosene so <laughs> you know it's a bomb so the fuel needs to be calculated almost exactly to the point where when you make it to your destination uh, the tanks are nearly empty um, there's obviously some um, uh, some margin uh, like in case you have to stay in the air a little longer or you have to be diverted to the other airport so you know there's certain margin because you can always drop the fuel if uh, if need be but if you don't take enough fuel then <laughs> that's going to be even worse because you're going to drop from the sky um but for that reason if you have uh over if you your luggage is overweight then that means a little more fuel is going to be burned and if a little bit more fuel is going to be burned well you gotta pay for that fuel right it's fair or it sounds fair to me but it doesn't work with people right we don't weigh people right before they get on the plane and we don't charge them extra for the ticket um, because they weigh say three times the my weight right it's not unheard of again I'm 130 <laughs> so it's very easy to be three times my weight and still be able to be relatively mobile meaning go to the airport and catch your flight and actually fit through the aisles in the in the plane it's probably not comfortable for anyone neither the person in question or other passengers but it's doable right and your ticket costs the same as my ticket right that is not fair but I don't complain about that but now we are saying that you should get an extra seat for free um, because you're overweight well if you literally cannot fit in one seat then okay but if you're getting an extra ticket just for your comfort well you know what I would become more comfortable having two seats too you know uh, I put you know my stuff on the seat next to me and you know or something you know that would improve my comfort just as it improves your comfort having two seats so that is no longer you know assistive this decision it's you know you demand more comfort uh, because you are unable to lose weight and if that is the case I can at least appreciate that but if on top of that you say that no I'm not gonna lose weight because you tell me to lose weight no I want to be fat and on top of that I want to get uh, free stuff and special accommodations everywhere I go that is not fair that does it feel fair to you does it sound fair it doesn't feel fair it doesn't sound fair so my my entire point pretty much is around just regular fairness nothing more
<laughs> I put so much flux on this. Um, hmm. Sounds like they're gonna be mowing the lawn. <sighs> it's not ideal, but what are you gonna do? Okay, so this side looks awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, this side, let's clean it more. But there's just a few more pens that need a little bit work. At first, let's get rid of some of this flux. can see better. Um. Okay, this side definitely needs more work.
All right. If this was IC608, we would have been done. Uh, but in um, 45 minutes ago. Now you see why I charge a lot more for this chip. It's a lot of tedious work. Tedious work. Not that I mind, <laughs> but I don't actually have enough, you know, enough to say about whatever topic I chose for the video to to just kind of ramble about it for two hours. You know, those those topics are usually kind of designed for one hour tops, <laughs> forty five minutes or so, and you know, there's plenty more I could say about the subject, but. Is it gonna be constructive? Not really. Not really. I don't wanna just complain, you know. When obese people, um, just those fat activists, I guess, uh, make those unhinged videos about how badly they're treated and, you know. Personally, I just I just feel sorry for them because I know what they're going through. I mean, I've never been that size like some of them <laughs> But I know what they're going through trying to lose the weight I Know how hard it is and I know how much discipline it takes So yeah, it's frustrating Especially when you're just trying to do something and you keep failing and failing and you do everything they tell you, right? The doctor says, you know, don't eat bread, I don't eat bread. I uh, don't eat pasta, I don't eat pasta, but I'm still gaining weight. Um, the majority about that is just portion controls. You know, in my, in my view, it doesn't really matter what you eat, as long as you don't eat a lot of it. I don't know. I lost weight eating McDonald's. But I just feel sorry for them. I don't want to attack them. <laughs> they have plenty of their own problems. They don't need my attacks on top of that. And they don't bother me personally. Um, because I don't fly a lot. I don't take buses and, you know. So we're good, we're good. And if you wanna free seats on the plane, fine by me. I mean, I still think it's not fair, but fine by me. More power to you. If you don't wanna lose weight, and I don't know, you wanna stay at the obesity level 10, fine by me. Uh, more power to you, and I expect your life, um, the length <laughs> of your life is going to be shortened significantly because of that. But if that's what you want to do, you just do it. Oh, and you can make a perfect argument just to kind of put me in my place, right? I'm a smoker, so eventually that's going to cause some health issues, and then I'm going to go to the hospital, and I'm going to expect some people to uh, take care of me, to do something about it. But I brought it upon myself, right? Am I a victim for smoking? Well... As I said, you know, a little bit of that blame why I started smoking in the first place is because, you know, everybody did. That was, this was something we did, and now it's the matter of discipline. Do I have enough discipline to quit? I do not. Not even close. So, you know, it's 
so I still smoke. It's been, I don't know, like 25 years now, maybe more. Yeah, I started early. <laughs> So yeah, does it make me a hypocrite? Mm. I don't know, maybe. Probably the only reason I'm, I talk about it is because I, I went through weight loss journey and it is kind of customary to, you know, when you when you talk about this subject then you you must have some experience with the subject you know either you or you know family member or something like that um, it's kind of gatekeeping and I don't approve uh, but you know it is customary that you gotta you gotta have some personal experience in the in the subject before you start you know, making assumptions and stuff. Because a lot of stuff in this world is counterintuitive. Yeah. And especially in my profession, that's a given. There's plenty of counterintuitive things and it feels like it should be that way and you just kind of rely on common sense And it doesn't work because you don't rely on common sense in this profession. You rely on measurements, you rely on math, calculations, experiments. Yeah. But, yeah, you gotta have some, uh, some experience with it. Okay, now let's do the uh, brushing. Oh, and the main reason why you should have some some experience and understanding of the problem before, especially before you start ju judging people, imagine the situation that, you know, you, you are like I was until the age of 30, but you are like that all your life, and you just eat whatever you want, and you never gain weight, right? Then, you know, it's kind of... <laughs> It's, since it's easy for you, you just expect that, you know, it's easy for other people, you know, and you, and you just say, well, no, nah, no, nah, they're just eat too much, they, you know, I don't know. But, you know, just because it was easy for you doesn't mean it will be easy for everyone. And that is not fair when you just start measuring other people based on your your own scale right and your own experience which was good experience right we prefer to be fair yes
But on the other hand, if you can't lose weight and you give up, then now don't, don't just, oh, what am I doing? This is the wrong chip. Um, don't just go out, you know, and start convincing other people or recruiting people, you know? Like, yeah, you don't lose weight. You're beautiful at that size. No, you're not. No, you're healthy on that side. No, you're not. You're not healthy at 600 pounds or even 400 pounds, 300 pounds. Well, unless you're like a you know, bodybuilder and you're seven feet tall, okay. But if you're a lady and you're in your 20s or 30s, you're 5'5", five five and you were weigh 300 pounds. Oh, you you want to convince me that that's healthy? No, you don't even believe that. <laughs> you don't believe that because you know it's not true because you are in your body. It's not healthy, it's not pretty, and it's not convenient. It's just horrible position to be in. Every little task is is difficult. Even getting up and from the from the couch, especially when you have like really cozy couch that just gonna fall into, you know, like a deep uh, cushiony couch. You know, even that, even getting up from the couch is a, is a lot of work. So no, I don't, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dietitian, but I don't believe healthy at every size. I do not believe that. Even if, uh, well, there was this lady one time on uh, the TV, because that, that used to be like a really hot, uh, hot topic. Uh, but the lady clearly very overweight, clearly, but also very entitled, very combative with very strong opinions that she holds very strongly and uh, she said that she she swims well like some kilometers a day and she runs all the time i don't believe that mm -mm. <laughs> no way and there's um there's a certain level of you know, claims that just don't make sense once you just kind of get go out there. Like if you, you know, if she said that, well, I don't overeat, um, you know, I walk a little here and there, I don't spend all day sitting in the couch and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would believe that, but she swims some kilometers a day and she runs all the time and what what does it even mean all the time because she's sitting in that interview she's clearly s sitting yeah. but if you just make those claims um just you know to make yourself feel better like yeah i don't overeat and uh I swim, all, I run all the time, I swim 10 kilometers a day and, and, and stuff, that's fine. You know, you're lying to yourself, that's normal. But if you make a case, you, 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 sp you spew those lies and you make a case that, you know, uh, there's no way I can lose weight and uh, if you can't lose weight then you're just like me and don't even try to lose weight because it's impossible because I couldn't do it and that's the service to everybody you know that's when your lies uh, have impact on others the consequences now you might be responsible for other people's misfortune 
don't know, maybe, maybe some young lady decided to lose weight. And she would have, but she didn't because she, she watched your video. Mm. I don't know. It's not a problem of annoyance, because, yeah, it's annoying when, um, you know, no. Uh, what was her name? I don't. I don't even know. Uh, but uh, there was this lady that went viral for uh, her super condescending speech about um, discrimination against over um, <laughs> against obese people. Okay. No, I, I don't call them plus size. What? What? Else? We have. We already have a word for that. We have. Uh, overweight and obese, right? And there are certain markers. Yes, it base it's based on BMI, but <laughs> you don't even have to know what BMI is. You look at the person and you see it. Okay, it's well. What kind of BMI would uh, make you feel better, or with what kind of BMI would explain? that a uh, person who is like 600 pounds is actually not obese it uh, what would that be in my math would have to be so yeah maybe it's off i mean possibly maybe it's uh, a little outdated but it kind of gives you a um good estimation whether you're you know whether you're obese or not Right, we're not talking about the difference. Like I'm trying to gain uh, ten more pounds, right? It, it's a, a tiny difference, or maybe five pounds. Actually, maybe I'll go to one, one forty, and so I need uh, well seven seven more pounds. I need to put on to to go to one one forty, and maybe keep that weight, right? But that's like tiny difference. Yeah, so BMI might be off on this. But if we're talking about the difference between uh, 140 pounds and 340 pounds at my, uh, you know, age and um, and height, well, then, you know, the, at that point, BMI really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Dude, you can't, you can't even get up. <laughs> okay, you can't run. You can't pull yourself on the, on the bar. Uh, you... <laughs> It's it's uh, a hazard for you to even use the stairs, or maybe you can't even get it up the stairs. You need to use the elevator um, or escalator. You know, and does it feel good? Do you feel good? Do you feel happy in that body? Some things you can't change about yourself. If you're discriminated because of your I don't know, your nationality or your origin or uh, because you're short, because you're tall, because, uh, you know, you have uh, three eyes or two noses and four ears. Yeah, well, there's nothing you can do with that. I mean, beyond like some maybe surgeries or something, but it's, you know, it's not your fault. But it's not like you were born 400 pounds overweight. You know, you, you kind of... You had to work really hard to gain that much weight. <laughs> so now, just work hard, work the same way, but just, I don't know. Actually, maybe it's not the best um, analogy, or it's not the best uh, statement saying that you had to work really hard to, to gain all that weight. Uh, because, yeah, the reason, the reason it's not something admired is because you know, you don't really have to work hard to, to get fat, you know. You do have to work hard to lose weight or to be in shape, right? It takes discipline, you gotta hit the gym or, you know, do some exercises and stuff. Uh, I actually never went to the gym when I was losing weight um, uh, because I thought it was uh, like like a waste, you know, I preferred to do some physical work, some physical labor. And uh, by that time, a friend of mine uh, bought a new house 
And so, yeah, I was going there like almost every day and just volunteering my time, you know, doing some hard labor for hours, right? And um, yeah, that allowed me to, to, that's when I started losing weight a lot because when I just stopped eating uh, or reduced eating to bare minimum to keep myself at the level of starvation almost, yeah, that did work, but the the weight really started melting off when I when I started doing some labor. Um, so yeah, that's why, you know, when all those, especially as I said, the, the annoyance doesn't really doesn't really bother me, right? Annoying, you know, like you know those those ladies that will make sure to show you the, their pictures from 10 years ago when they were hot before two kids, right? I had friends like that. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, you know, because, okay, I believe, yeah, you were hot. <laughs> okay, fine. But you probably should leave that in the past and uh, just be a mother right now, not worry about whether you're hot or not. Uh, and the same with the you know, f um, plus size models, basically either overweight or obese people showing their body. Yeah, slightly annoying, but I don't mind. Okay, if that works for you. But then that, you know, kind of entitlement that now I should find, I should find her uh, attractive or I don't know admire her or something because she's a model I don't think even those models believe that you know because now imagine uh, do you ever like can you imagine a situation where uh, some skinny lady looks at the way overweight lady and says, oh, I wish I was that fat. So, oh, but unfortunately I'm skinny. I don't think that ever happens because you can get that fat, no problem, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's always the, the other fat uh, ladies that admire those because of the confidence. And yeah, that's admirable, the confidence. But is it the confidence that kind of borderlines delusion? And what exactly are you promoting? Because they um, they say positivity. Fa the, what was it? Body size, body positivity, or some something like that. But these are really negative people. They're like really angry. Whoa. And God forbid you start a discussion with them. <laughs> and yes, they will make sure to tell you that they're plus size models. Like suddenly that makes them not fat. <laughs> yeah. Life is kind of weird. Life nowadays, life with internet and everybody having access to, you know. Back in the day, you wouldn't even see those people, see like, you know, uh, morbidly obese people uh, because they were not mobile, right? Maybe that's why I never seen them. Maybe the, the, they have, there have always be, been uh, people like that in Poland, maybe. And I just never seen them because they never leave their room because they can't <laughs> um, but nowadays I don't know all you need is a chair and a camera and a microphone and not even that you just need your cell phone and that's it especially nowadays cell phones with the cameras they come with amazing and suddenly you're an activist back in the day you actually had to do some work meaning you had to move your body, your overweight or obese body to achieve anything, right? 
Yeah, to go protest on the streets and stuff. Yeah. And now? Nah. And one, um, you know, th there is one advice that perhaps I can give you if you're on the weight loss journey or some pointer. Uh, just like in in pretty much everything, right? In um, usually are people who quit drinking, right? Alcoholics or just non non alcoholics but drunks, <laughs> right? Uh, when they quit drinking, they kind of replace that habit with something else, and they start overeating. I've seen that firsthand many times. And I'm not sure which one is worse. Probably alcohol is worse. But it's just kind of, you know, you're replacing one addiction with another addiction. But that is something that actually works. Um, you can replace one addiction with another addiction. And so in this case, you know, if you're, if you love, if you love food so much that you're, entire day your high points of your day is when you eat replace those high points with something else i'm not saying you know doing other um, addictive um stuff like you know alcohol or cigarettes or you know anything like that but you know you have to find something that you that will be the high point of your day because as long as the uh, eating is a high point of your day, you're, it's going to be hard to lose any weight. Ever. <laughs> I don't know, maybe a hobby. Maybe something time-consuming. Something, uh, perhaps something like this, right? Uh, before you know, the two hours, yeah, the, the video has been going for over two hours, right? And I'm hungry. I'm, I'm hungry. I could eat. Uh, but I don't have time. It's, uh, yeah, I got to do some work right after this. Then I have some meetings. Then I have to attend a few other things. And I have um, a lot of work at work to do. So now I'm, I'll just smoke a cigarette. I'm back to work. And uh, I'll eat later, I guess. So it's easy for me to keep my weight. So not you know not gain weight because i have a lot of stuff that i do right but as long as your eating is your favorite thing or the thing that you you wait all day to do or every hour then yeah it's going to be hard for you and unfortunately especially in the actually uh, everywhere a lot of um uh, celebrations like um, you know Christmas, Thanksgiving, Memorial, uh, uh, you know uh, Independence Day. A lot of those uh, revolve around food, right? There are special kinds of food that you make in certain times of the the year, right? And be it either you know like sweets or more complex dishes or you know hot dogs for 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 July right, so all of those celebrations kind of revolve around food, and which makes it which makes it hun harder, all right. And also, you know what? I'm gonna give you one more <laughs> one more advice when you do lose weight. Because if you, if you want to lo lose weight, you will lose weight. No worries. You just have to want to do it. But when you do, don't make your whole life about that. Because that is the most annoying thing when, especially people who st quit drinking, now every conversation with that guy is going to be around quitting drinking. And God forbid he sees you with... Uh, a beer. He's gonna have ten thousand advice for you, advices, <laughs> uh, and he always gonna have an advice. And you know, don't you know if weight 
or drinking or doing any substance abuse if that hinders your ability to lead a life to to do your thing right to work or or do anything once you remove it right so you lose weight or quit doing um you know quit drinking quit smoking whatever now do what you couldn't do before don't make your whole life about one thing that you achieved um i mean it's definitely don't get me wrong definitely brag about that because you achieved it you know give yourself a credit a little pat on the back but move on eventually right (laughs) don't make your entire life about one thing that you achieved because you're not going to be happy either Okay. All right, I checked all the pins. Uh, let's see, are we sticky anywhere still? We're not. But uh, let's do this. Not bad, not bad. So I'm blowing with 220, see how much flux is gonna ooze from underneath the chip. But there's barely nothing. Uh, there's barely anything. So we're good. Uh, so I'll just give it one last few Q-tip cleanings and we should be good to seal the chip. See, now I'm gonna have to edit this monstrosity of the video. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to publish it today, probably not. And it's Memorial Weekend, and I, I actually I wanted to do this job after the Memorial Weekend um, to replace it with the new chip, because I should receive it next week sometime. Uh, but the customer said that it's somewhat urgent. Not super urgent, but I nah. That probably means that, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world, but I would like to receive it as soon as possible. So, that's why we're doing it today. And that's why perhaps it's going to be published way, (coughs) way later. Okay, I got, do I have a little fox here? Let's do this.
Alrighty, that will do. That's what it looks like. And now misfires should stop. If they don't, well, we'll go from there. <laughs> if they don't. Oh, actually, one last thing. I didn't see, I inspected all the pens. I didn't see any obvious stuff, but let's just put some deoxid on it which improves electrical connections and maybe that'll help too Some of these are gold plated, some are just steel or zinc or whatever. So this will nicely clean them. And we are done. Just short two and a half hours later, we are done. Alrighty, Whew. I got even sweaty. Well, thank you guys very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one.